what's going on Chris here and today we're actually back with the Stanley Parable so let's go screw this I'm just gonna go right now let's go yeah when Stanley came to a set of two open doors he entered the door on his left I still don't wanna I wanna check this up that other room this was not the correct way to the meeting room and Stanley knew it perfectly well perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first just to admire it wow yes this room. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. I'll do and it. so he detoured through the maintenance section, walked straight ahead to the opposite door, and got back on track. It's an elevator. There's a big red button. Okay. I, I gotta step. I'll, I'll go this way, fine. Yet, there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. How to solve a, dispute, a dispute with a co-worker. Let it ball up inside you, take it out. Damn it! Using slides to assure employees that everything is okay. Make sure your slide is a slick blue graphic in the header. Throw some bell of okay okay well thank you oh Stanley stepped into the broom closet but there was nothing here so he turned around and got back on track I'm just gonna stay in here there was nothing here no choice to make no path to follow just an empty broom closet no reason to still be here damn it Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. No. Screw you. It's a red thing. Click it! Oh, I guess I cannot click it. Okay. I'll go this way. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in yeah. such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? Why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange, this can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. Coffee mug. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing Wait, buttons. Wait, what the hell? I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So... He imagined himself flying and began okay. to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled Whee! that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself Wait, sooner. Wait, what the hell? Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. It, it just keeps I'm looping. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving it. himself? 
Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Yeah, now, this is the, the same... These words what was the quite hell? A shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too, surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control, that this was a dream. So he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress on his back, the fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. I don't want I want my apartment, and my wife, and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. I am okay. Um. Actually, this yard. Oh my god. Well. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? Oh god. And everything went black. Are you okay? Hello? This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. What the? But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy. This much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this. And in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But what? then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. So I just died. That was the end. Well. Safe Monday. I hate Mondays. Can I push buttons? Oh. Oh, I could close but Stanley the simply couldn't handle the pressure. What if he had to make a decision? What if a crucial outcome fell under his responsibility? He had never been trained for that. No. This couldn't go any way except badly. The thing to do now, Stanley thought to himself, is to wait. Nothing will hurt me. Nothing will break me. In here I can be happy forever. I will be happy. Stanley waited. Hours passed. Then days. Had years gone by? He no longer had the ability to tell. But the one thing he knew for sure, beyond any doubt, was that if he waited long enough, the answers would come. Eventually, someday, they would arrive. Soon, very soon now, this will end. He will be spoken to. He will be told what to do. Now it's just a little bit closer. Now it's even closer. Here it comes. What the hell? Did I just lose? Are you kidding me? Okay. All of his co-workers were gone. 
What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. I got a good idea. When Stanley came to a set of two open... This was not the correct way to the meeting okay, room. I and Stanley it. knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Okay. The lounge was sublime, a work of art. But eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've got on the wrong down? foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by <gasps> yourself. Oh, crap. Not asking, but in his eagerness to prove that he is in control of the story and no one gets to tell him what to do, Stanley leapt from the platform and plunged to his death. Good job, Stanley. Everyone thinks you are very powerful. <laughs> God damn it, I meant to... Uh, I realized you can't jump in this game. All uh, this co-workers well, were gone. Well, that sucks. What could okay. it mean? I got Stanley this. decided to oh, go wait, to crap. the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Wait, what? Okay. Close every door. When Stanley came to a set of two open okay, doors, I got this. this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. What the hell? I Standing now in this incredible Something room, just Stanley for the chair, but eager to get back to business, here. Stanley took the first open door on his left. Okay, so I'm gonna take this and take the lift. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Okay. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me, I'm asking for her. So this, this is girl. it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself, to put your work aside, to let her back into your life. She's been waiting. Can I go this way? Damn it. Screw her. Yeah, I'm not going in there. Screw you. I'll go somewhere else. Um. Ugh. I can't jump. Let me in. Oh my. Can I do something else? Can I jump onto this car? I don't want to die again. Ugh. I don't want her. It's gonna be a trap. I know it. It's a black room. No! That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Oh, no, 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 no. You can't... Did you just unplug the phone? <laughs> now, that wasn't supposed to be a choice. How did you do that? You actually chose incorrectly? I didn't even know that was possible. Let me double check. No, it's definitely here, clear as day. Stanley picks up the phone. He's taken to his apartment where he finds his wife, and the two pledge themselves to one another. Music comes in, fade to white, roll credits. 
not picking up the phone is actually somehow an incorrect course of action. How is that even possible? None of these decisions were supposed to mean anything. I don't understand. How on earth are you making meaningful choices? What did you... Wait a second. Did I just see... No, that's not possible. I can't believe it. How had I not noticed it sooner? You're not Stanley. You're a real person. <sighs> I can't believe I was so mistaken. This is why you've been able to make correct and incorrect choices. And to think I've been letting you run around in this game for so long. If you've made any more wrong choices, you might have negated it entirely. It's as though you completely ignored even the most basic safety protocol for real-world decision-making. Or did you not grasp the severity of the situation? Well, I won't have that kind of risk on my watch. I'm going to stop the game for a moment so we can educate you properly on safe decision-making in the real world. Please observe this helpful instructional video. Choice. It's the best part of being a real person. But if used incorrectly, it can also be the most dangerous. For example, in this scenario, a hypothetical real person named Stephen has a choice. He could spend years helping improve the quality of life for citizens of impoverished third world nations. Or he could systematically set fire to every orphan living in a 30 kilometer radius of his house. Which choice would you make? Remember that unlike here, the real world makes sense. And at no time should you make a choice that does not conform to rational logic. If you find yourself speaking with a person who does not make what? sense, in all likelihood, that person is not real. Allow the person to finish their thought, then provide an excuse why you cannot continue talking. Turn to a partner and practice saying, My goodness, is it 4.30? I'm supposed to be having a back sack and crack. Oh my god. Practice. Okay. Excellent. Making choices on a regular basis is the best part to a healthy decision-making process. Most medical professionals recommend making at least eight choices per day. Do you make more than eight? Less? And finally, if you begin to wonder if your choices are actually meaningful and whether you'll ever make a significant contribution to the world, just remember that in the vast infiniteness of space, your thoughts and problems are materially insignificant, and the feeling should subside. At this time, your instructor will guide you in an exercise to test and reinforce the material covered in this video. Okay. Ah, welcome back. You may have noticed that this room has begun to deteriorate as a result of narrative contradiction. But not to worry. Now that you're properly informed on good decision-making, we're going to revisit a choice you made just a few minutes ago and see what the correct thing to do would have been. This way, please. I don't wanna. Wait, can I go in here? Damn it. That needs to happen. Now that we know your choices are meaningful, we can't have you jumping off the platform and dying. Imagine the main character dying senselessly halfway through the story. That story would make no sense at all. We just need to get you home as soon as possible before the narrative contradiction gets any worse. Unfortunately, it seems this place is not well equipped to deal with reality. Okay, I'm ready. Let me in. Trying to open every door. I got this. Okay. Almost there. You'll take the door on the left, back to the correct ending. The oh. story will have resolution <laughs> once oh again, God. and you'll be home free in the real world. I thought that said the F word. I was gonna freaking just start crying because that was really bad. Okay, let me open this. Nothing? Really? Okay. Now remember, all you need to do is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. 
All right. <clears throat> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So the door on my right, right? No! Why did you do that? Quickly, hurry back in the other direction. Perhaps we're not too late. I don't wanna. Can I go in here? Oh crap, so I have to... Do I have to go on the... D damn it. Okay. Yes. Oh, it's ruined. You, I can't believe, after everything we talked about, that you... My story! You've destroyed my work! Why? For what? What did you get out of that? What did you think was so special about seeing the game oh undone? Oh my god, like Jay. So much garbage. It, well, it's worthless now. And what am I supposed to do? Even if there were a way to continue, would it be worth it? Are to you know that my story is now incorrect? How can I go back to that? I can't erase that knowledge. I'll have to live with it forever. Reliving its impossibility forever. Oh, I couldn't live that way. Is it better to shut the game down entirely? To willingly destroy all of my work? Oh, no. Don't, know. don't do it, don't What's do the it. Answer? What do I do? What do I do? What don't do, do don't, I... don't do it, don't do it, do it. No, I have to. No. I have to shut the game down. I have to. I have to. No. No! Oh, god damn it. Anyways, Jay is messaging me. Well, that didn't work. Oh, up. I'm here. I'm still here. Here in this pile of rubbish. With you. You. Who thought you were so clever. Now look where we are. My entire game is destroyed. It was the only thing in the world that was mine and you've run it into the ground. What, did you think that would be funny? You just had to see? Didn't I impress upon you how important it was to be like Stanley? He actually knows how to do what I tell him to. He understands that if I say to do something, there's a damn good reason for it. That thought hadn't even occurred to you, had it? That there's a world outside of you? You're a child. Miles, he's uh -oh. a jerk. My story. If you'd just gone through the door on the left, you would have seen it. There was a whole underground facility. You would have destroyed it and been victorious. It would have been so perfect. Yeah, right. I worked so hard on it. I tried so hard. What the? Is behave exactly as Stanley would. That means choosing responsibly and always putting the story first. I'm quite sure you'll be up to the task. Just follow my lead and you'll be fine. All right. <clears throat> When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Ugh, I don't want this to freaking ruin it and stuff. I have to go through that again, but I wanna. Okay, Yola, I'm going left. Damn it. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Wow, I can't open the freaking broom closet now. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Oh wow, he changed it so I can't do anything bad. What a jerk. Well, can I sit down? Nothing, no. Does he have porno? Porno mags in his, in his computer? Stepping inside his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, wow. Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this until he saw the door with a voice receiver next to it. Surely behind this door lay all the answers to his questions. And beyond all probability, he knew the passcode. He had seen it on his boss's computer just last week. Nightshark 115. 
Was this the code to open the door? Would it still work? There was only one way to find out. Stanley had been trained never to speak up, but now he would draw from within himself the courage to face the unknown. He drew a sharp breath and then spoke the code. Night Shark 115? Hello? I just said it! <clears throat> Stanley spoke the code. Night Shark 115. Night Shark 115! There on the wall. Oh my good god. I can't jump nice. I'm sorry, is there a problem? You didn't mishear me, did you? Please speak the code into the receiver. Otherwise, we can't get on with the story. This is a crucial step. So there's not a talk button or anything. Okay, fine. You're not gonna do it. But you know what? It's pretty humiliating to bring you this far, only for you to suddenly decide you have better things to do. I asked you for this one single thing, for your respect. The kind of respect Stanley shows for his choices. He knows what it means to take a story seriously. If you didn't want to see what I had to show you, then why did you come here? You had a choice, you know. You could have gone through the door on the right. You could have done whatever the hell you wanted over there. Why did you come this way? Speak. Say something to me. Explain yourself, you coward. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. What the hell? Stanley? Hello? Are you... Is everything okay? Stanley, please. I... I need you to make a choice. I need you to walk through the door. Are you listening to me? Can you hear me? Is everything all right? Stanley, this is important. The story what? needs you. It needs you to make a decision. It cannot exist without you. Do you understand me? Whatever choice you make is just fine. They're both correct. You cannot be wrong here. We can work together. I'll accept whatever you what do. I hell? simply need you to take that step forward, please. Choose. Do something. Anything. This is more important than you can ever know. I need this. The story needs it. So, you hear me? Are you there? Is that Please really the this? end? Stanley, are you there? Okay. It's okay, I can wait. You need time to decide. Time to make sure your choice is correct. That is the best choice. That's all right. I'll wait for you to decide what's the right thing to do. Take as much time as you need. Is that seriously the end? These weren't here before, were they? Hello? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room to check on his co-workers. He never functioned well by himself and constantly needed support and guidance from others. So the thought of total solitude was terrifying to him. This is new. Well. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. So, if I just stand still... Damn it. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just um. to admire it. Is this the end? Stanley felt lightheaded, butterflies in his stomach, giddy in a way he had never known before. Was it this room? A connection between the two? Could a man love a room? I mean, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. What the hell? All of the narration is different. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's incredible he wasn't fired years ago. 
Look, Stanny, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. Okay. I'm not your enemy. Really, I'm not. I realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you forgot. What? Really? I was in the middle of something. Do you have zero consideration for others? Are you that convinced that go. I want something bad to happen to you? Why? I don't know how to convince you of this, but I really do want to help you, to show you something beautiful. Look, let me prove it. Let me prove that I'm on your side. Give me a chance. Now listen carefully, this is important. Stanley walked through the red door. Oh, thank God you are willing to listen to me. Do you see that I okay. really have wanted you to be happy all this time? The problem is all these ah. choices. The two of us always trying to get somewhere that isn't here. Running and running and running, just the way you're doing right now. Don't you see that it's killing us, Stanley? I just... I wanted to stop. Wait, am I, I just... would... We would both be so much happier if we just... stopped. And I think... Well, I think I have a solution. Here, let me show you. Okay, go on the other side. Wait, what? Hello? No. Oh, I swear, if I have to restart this game. I guess it's just loading. Okay, we're good. Hmm. What do we want? What are we looking for? Hmm? This random button, okay. What the hell? Here. Yes. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? If we just stay right here, right in this moment with this place, Stanley, I think I feel happy. I actually feel happy. <laughs> okay, screw you. No, wait. Where are you going? In here. What the hell? Oh no, stay away from those stairs. If you hurt yourself, if you die, the game will reset. We'll lose all of this. I will not die. Please, no, Stanley, let me stay here. Don't take this from me. I don't want to reset the game. Oh, well, screw this narrator. He's been a jerk to me. Please, Stanley, think about what you're doing. 69! No! Oh. oh, thank God. You lived. You have... No. No, no, what are you doing, Stanley? Please, I'm asking you not to take this away from me. I can't go back to what I was before. If you die, we'll both go back. Why are you doing this? Because I hate you. Ah! Oh, Stanley. my. Let's go back to the other room. Can you do that for me? I kind of wanna. No, screw you, this guy. My god. Is this really how much you dislike my game? That you'll throw yourself from this platform over and over to be rid of it? You were literally willing to kill yourself to keep me from being happy. You saw You're reading the situation ah! correctly. Or maybe you're just getting a kick out of it. I don't know anymore. I just wanted us to get along, but I guess that was too much to ask. You're a liar. It looks like you wanted to make a choice after all. You're a liar. And this one is yours. Oh jeez, that guy just made it really weird. Okay, I kind of want to... Please don't kill me this time. Oh please, no, don't die. Oh, is it over? <sighs> it's going to restart, isn't it? Damn it, don't I'm restart. No! Did just restart? No. No. But Stanley simply couldn't handle the pressure. No, 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 no. Screw you. Yeah, begin the game again. Piece of crap. Well. How long was I sitting there? Stanley wondered to himself. Minutes. Days? Centuries? 
Did something crucial happen while my senses were turned? He made a note to be more careful with time from now on. Why is it like raining? When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door. This was not the correct way to the meeting okay, room. Okay, well, Stanley I'm gonna end it off here. Well. So thank you guys Perhaps all for watching. Perhaps he by the employee we lounge enjoyed. first, just okay, to admire let it. Okay, you shut up, you freaking person. Okay, well, anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Stanley Parable. Make sure you tell me if you want more of this, because I think it's over. Unless I just totally screwed it up and accidentally closed the door and then ruined the whole story. But anyways, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And yeah, goodbye.